Good morning, everyone, and let's get started. Thank you. Good morning. Um, so welcome to our final Faith Forum of 2022, and today's topic, of course, uh, is our finances. So there are six sections to today's uh, presentation. Sounds lengthy, but it's not. Only 31 slides. But we'll... 32? 32 slides, to be exact, but it's not going to take that long, I don't think. Uh, six sections to today's presentation. Uh, we, council approved a financial review from Heather Ruder, who owns Harmony Accounting. She specializes in accounting for churches, and we contracted with her to conduct a financial review this year. So a, a brief summary of Heather's financial review of our accounts and our systems. S second section, a quick update about our online giving method and process and strategy. Section three, revenue update from Doug. Section four, an expense update from Greg. Number five, a very, very, very brief overview of the 2023 budget, like two lines, very brief because in two weeks from today, we'll be presenting the entire budget during the annual election and budget meeting. And then, quite honestly, surprise, Pastor didn't announce it at the beginning of service today, but we have been awarded a $6,000 grant from the Emanuel Foundation relative to uh, our social media strategy. So we'll be sharing a little bit of information about that as well. I basically just gave you, I basically just completed section number six. But, um, so let's get started. These are the six, six sections that we want to cover today. There were basically five key findings from our financial review. So we invited Heather Ruder in. Uh, Heather met with all of the treasurers. For example, uh, Noreen, who treasurer for the food pantry. Uh, Katie Schrockberger with Welka. Um, Audrey, she met with Audrey relative to the endowment and then met with Doug and Greg and she also met with Mary Ann relevant to our servant keeper church management, management system where, for example, which is where our records of giving are maintained. So she met with all of these individuals and her key findings are that our current system, basically currently how we currently track our income and our expenses is very, it's a very much a manual process and that it is siloed that in terms of reporting as well. So, I mean, we, we still need Noreen to be the treasurer for the food pantry and, and Katie to be treasurer for Welka and Audrey to, to over monitor the account for the endowment. Um, but is there a way to uh, digitize some of that process, automate part of that process and pull the reports together? Second key finding, and Heather was very careful to, to emphasize that there, it was a very minor, minor discrepancy um, between Servant Keeper and QuickBooks. And honestly, I'm kind of fuzzy on the details now because it's, it's been a while since, it's been a couple of months since we met with Heather. But there are a couple categories that, of income that did not always transfer into QuickBooks. Um, so again, not a major issue. Uh, nothing that is reportable, nothing that was alarming, but something that she did uh, discover and share with us. Yeah, yes, but there were some categories too, though, that relative to giving that Marianne was recording, but I think you might have been missing or what weren't necessarily reflecting and likely had a lot to do with the fact that we were siloed. Does anybody have any recall from council about, again, I mean, it was, I, I think we're talking like $15. I mean, it wasn't anything major. When, while not material, dif, materially different, I mean, truly not materially different. Um, but again, her emphasis on if we had a little bit more automation, then we wouldn't be, we, every, everything would be caught. Uh, QuickBook date, QuickBooks data needs to be reconciled, and maybe this is already, maybe 
Greg has already completed this. Um, the, there was a transition from different versions of QuickBooks and initially some of the data was lost when Greg transitioned to a different version of QuickBooks. And like I said, maybe all a part of this has been completed yet. Looking at Greg right now. Okay, and and there, I think there was some redundancy as well, perhaps, right? Okay, because some of the entries were were double entered. Our monthly accounting and payroll software subscription fees are too high. Uh, Heather had some recommendations relative to other options that we could consider that would reduce our monthly subscription fees. So a lot of a lot of software systems now, rather than you know when you would actually purchase the software and it would come in a box, and then you install the diskettes into your computer and download or install the software. Basically, a lot of the software systems now that we use are based upon a monthly subscription fee. And so she had re some recommendations relative or suggestions that we could perhaps lower our monthly fees that we pay relative to the software systems that we use. And then finally, her, her final key finding was that we had no online giving presence. And we'll talk about that here in a minute, uh, what, what, we, what Pastor has put into place. So basically, these five key findings boiled down into two primary recommendations uh, from Heather. One is to implement an integrated church management and accounting system that is web-based and utilized for all church accounts. Pastor has started to look at how to integrate Servant Keeper with QuickBooks, and it's not an easy task. Vanco, thank you. That's the, right, and Vanco is the online giving platform, which we'll talk about here in a second. Pastor has looked into integrating Serving Keeper with Vanco. Uh, however, not such an easy task that Pastor quickly discovered. So that's why I indicated this is an early stage of, of implementing this recommendation. So I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but Vanco is the online giving platform. So if any of you have used that give button on our website, you were accessing the Vanco online software system. And what Heather is recommending is that there is a way to integrate, in our case, it would be Vanco and Serving Keeper, such that when someone makes an online gift, it is automatically populated in Servant Keeper. Right now, Marianne has to manually enter that gift from Vanco into Servant Keeper. So the objective would be to um, automatically post that Vanco gift, automatically post it into Servant Keeper, uh, reduce the time for manual entry and reduce any reduce the likelihood of error as well. The <clears throat> part of this <clears throat> part of this recommendation includes that a suggestion that all of the treasurers who I mentioned just a minute ago would basically be using the same version of QuickBooks and it would be a web-based or online version of QuickBooks. So if you're familiar with it already maybe where you work how each you know within a company each employee might be accessing the same system but they have their own credentials. They have their own username, they have their own password. Maybe they only are accessing a certain element of the software system. It would be kind of the same concept. Again, early stages, um, this, that, what I just described has not yet been implemented and we're going to have to have some conversations with the treasurers before we begin to go down that road. And, and then it would be utilized for all of the church accounts, yes. Kurt Weller. So what Heather mentioned. So you talked about Vanco and Servant <clears throat> Keeper. And then you've talked about QuickBooks. But is there any integration between QuickBooks and Servant Keeper? Or is that considered an integrated church management and accounting system? Or do you need to be looking at something else that would cover 
you know, inputs from Vanco, <coughs> that servant keeper, you know, that would may replace servant keeper and QuickBooks together? Heather did have some recommendations. Um, I mean, for example, uh, Easy Tithe, Shelby Next, Apolos. Again, these have not yet been acted on, okay? But so the answer is yes, that there is a way to integrate all of those systems together. We have not yet pursued that. Uh, that will be a major consideration for council uh, for 2023. But, but yes, it is possible. It would be possible to integrate all of those systems together. And, and yes, I mean, she did. And I think, there, I think there are some, if my recall is correct, I think there might be one or two systems that basically are all self-contained that would have all of those features built into it, online giving, accounting, um, and some sort of church management system. And again, church management system is basically the reports that you receive end of the year that list your giving. That is basically what is meant by church management system. So there are solutions that can, there, there are single products that can provide all of those solutions. Again, emphasize we have not yet gone down that road. It, it, but it was part of Heather's recommendation. So again, reduce manual entry um, and reduce the likelihood of error. So other questions about an integrated church management and accounting system. Again, early stages. Everything that we had in place prior to Heather's report, those systems are still in place and they're functioning just as they were before Heather uh, conducted her report. She completed it, she presented it to council in September. She conducted it during the summertime, presented it to council in September. Correct. Correct. Uh, for those of you online, Pastor indicated that council has had two months to consider our, our steps. Um, so, so again, uh, this will be, <clears throat> this will be a, a discussion point going forward into 2023. The second recommendation, again, five key findings, but two major recommendations. The second recommendation from Heather is to establish and promote an online giving presence, which we have begun. So shortly after receiving Heather's report, uh, Pastor took time to enhance our online giving opportunities. So uh, maybe I'll just go, yeah, so I'll just go into it then. So I'm moving into section two now, online giving updates, since it's directly tied in with Heather's second recommendation. So at the, at the end of September 22, Pastor spent part of September building the Vanco platform. And, and Vanco, by the way, um, is associated with Thrivent. I think that's how we first started using Vanco, was because it was recommended to us by Thrivent representative. So during the month of September, Pastor began to build out the Vanco platform for St. Andrews. It was launched at the end of September. So if you remember when Pastor started talking about QR codes and showing the QR code on the screen, that, that, is, that was the end of September when we launched Vanco as an online giving platform. During the month of October, we received roughly $1,500 in donations and gifts from six different donors, which honestly I think is a significant amount. I mean, in some respects you can say 1500 dollars compared to our $200,000 budget is relatively small. Yeah, but for the first month of us using Vanco, I mean, I, I think six people, I think us receiving $1,500 from six different donors during the month of October is fairly significant uh, during the first, first month that we offered online giving. So a little bit more about this. If you were to go to the, our, our church website, in the upper right-hand corner where you see the blue arrow, in the upper right-hand corner is a button uh, labeled give. 
So if you wanted to give online, that is how you would start the process. Go to that upper right-hand corner of our website, click on Give, and then the first box, the first option you will see will look like this. I know the font is really small. This is an image that I captured yesterday from the website when I was putting this together. But if you wanted to give for the general fund, this, is, this would be that blue button you see there is, is what you would select. You, um, you could probably see it here on the front screen, too far away for me to see it on the back screen, but inside that blue button is the word donate. So if you wanted to give to the general fund, you would click on that blue donate button. Another option, for example, is backpacks, the backpack program. Same thing, if you wanted to give to the backpack and not the general fund, then you would scroll down, find backpacks, click on the blue donate button. Another option is memorial gifts. Another option is harvest hosts. This is the new program that council approved this year where we are designated as a host site for the harvest host program. So RVers who are looking for a location, geographic location to park overnight, uh, we are listed on their website and we have had four, five, four uh, different RVers already stay, park in our parking lot overnight. This is a way for them. Harvest Host is basically the RV version of Airbnb. So this is the option for the, our visitors, so to say, um, RV hosts, uh, RV visitors who are spending the night to, to gift. Because part of the expectation is, although there's no designated dollar amount that they're required to give, they are encouraged to give a donation to the host church. And so this would be the, their method of, of being able to do that. And poinsettias, uh, just last week I think Pastor set this up and we've had one or two uh, individuals already, two individuals already uh, donate or, or purchase poinsettias for the upcoming holiday season. There are other options as well that I did not include. Um, food pantry is another one of these options. Our youth program, scholarship, endowment, and disaster response are other options that you see under the give button. So again, um, at our website, upper right hand corner is the give button. These are just some of the options. I just read the other remaining options that you do not see illustrated that you did not see illustrated. The trade-off is online convenience versus fees. When someone gifts, when someone donates online using our current, well, any, any online system for that matter, uh, yes, it's convenient, but there is a fee. So for example, if you gift $100 to the backpack program, using this system that I just illustrated, going back here. If, if you gift $100 using this method, the net amount received by St. Andrews, I'm going to guesstimate is going to be maybe $97, $98. So that's the trade-off. It's convenient, and especially for visitors, especially for your family member who's living in Duluth, Minnesota, who wants to gift for whatever reason. I mean, it's a convenient way for them to do so. The trade-off, though, is that it does cost the church, going the wrong direction, it does cost the church money. Um, so, uh, you know, you can also consider it do cost of doing business as well. So, it, I mean, there, there's no doubt in my mind that, that we have to offer this option. Um, and council was fully on board with this, but again, like I said, the trade-off is that there are fees associated with it. So if you want to give $100 to the backpack program and you want to make sure that all $100 does indeed go to the backpack program, honestly, check is, 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 is the way to do it. Pastor? There is a way to offset those fees. I made True. sure that that was, that was an option. 
when you and and what he's what Jim's talking about is only with credit card giving. If you're using your checkbook or an ACH account, there's the the fees are negligible. I mean, it's it's 0.09 percent or something like that. But when you use a credit card, it's 2.35 percent per transaction plus 35 cents. So underneath, when you as you move through the process, I should turn around and face you. When you move through that process, there's a button toward the bottom that says, I would like to, pay, to offset these fees. If you click that, then and your $100 gift will come to the church in total, but then you will be charged on your credit card $102.70, so that you take care of the convenience fee and not the church. Thank you. Yeah, I, my error in not pointing that out. So thank you, Pastor. Kirk? So from a, a giving standpoint, and uh, let's, let's go back to your first case, your $100, where a person gave $100, um, but they ended up only 97 What does the church reflect as far as the gift to the church for tax purposes? Is it $100 or is it only $97 that will show up and be applicable related to a giving, charitable giving for income tax purposes? And, you know, so it would only be $97 and then $3 would be effectively, you know, would be a fee. Is, is that the way the system is set up? Yes. So that's, that's, that's accurate. So if, if Rose and I gave $100 to the backpack program via Vanco, we would only be credited on our account $97, correct? That $3 would, quote, disappear because of the, because of the fees. So that's correct. If, we, if we're giving that to the general fund, in the end, we would only be giving $97, and that's what would appear on our giving statement. The, uh, so Pastor and Doug, uh, honestly, probably most knowledgeable about the, the Vanco system right now. So if you have any additional questions, uh, Pastor and, and, and Doug would be more than happy to, uh, to answer those questions. I think that's the last slide, so on, on online giving anyway. So any, any other questions about online giving? Okay, all right, thank you. Section three, and I'm going to uh, enlist Doug's help with this. So let me, let me do a quick run through here. Uh, well, uh, Doug, I guess you could as well. But year to date, so this is year to date comparing October of 22 with October of 21. Okay. Our operating income is around six, roughly $6,000 less what it was compared to last year. However, our non-operating income, which is basically specials, like special gifts, memorials, other specials, is almost $6,000 more than it was last year, which means that our total church income through October, comparing October of 22 with October of 21, were virtually even. And I know Doug has, uh, oh, and then our average operating income, which is this amount, okay, our o average operating income per Sunday is almost identical as well, based upon 44 Sundays. And again, October 22 compared to October 21. So Doug has some uh, charts and Doug, the mic is yours. Okay. Yeah, I like to get a feel for what what's going on so that I can kind of forecast where we're headed. Um, this is the weekly, or the, excuse me, the monthly total giving. And you can see there's a lot of activity on the, yeah, on the left in the early part of the year. The summer gets kind of flat and steady. And then in the fall, it's like usually it picks up and then everybody catches up at the end. You can see the big spike up 
in December on the very right side. So that's, that's the trend that we can for use to forecast where we're headed. Um, some of those are COVID years, so. But, but remarkably, it's, it's fairly predictable. Um, and this is, this is the annual um, rise in the total, which is also really predictable where it heads. Some years are, you know, but what I've noticed with this is the, the graph has been getting flatter and flatter that the giving is more even month to month, which is, is kind of interesting. Um, we still get a little bit of a bump in the spring and a little bump at the end, but uh, it's steady. And this is what I use to forecast where we're headed based on history and where we are and what I expect and just projecting the, the line out um, to forecast what, what we could expect for next year because statistically we'll continue what we are doing unless something radical happens. Um, so I thought I'd share that with, uh, with you. So that's, that's my section, any questions? Okay. Thank you, Doug. Next section, section number four, relative to expenses. And again, year to date comparisons. So comparing October of 22 versus October of 21. Our total expenditures are almost $2,000, roughly $2,000 difference, uh, $2,000 decrease in our total expenditures. So that's salaries, utilities, uh, mission share. Our checkbook uh, checking account balance is roughly $2,000 more in our checking account at the end of October this year compared to last year. Our savings account, there is a difference. However, uh, the, the difference you see be between October, during November and December of last year, we had to transfer funds from savings to cover our, some of our operating expenses. So that's why you see that difference in the savings account balance the savings account balance has remained relatively steady except with a few pennies of interest each month during 2022. So we, we started 2022 with, with roughly $34,000 in our savings account. But what, that's, what this slide illustrates though is that last November and December, we transferred, had to transfer roughly 9,000 from savings to checking to cover our operating expenses. So to translate what I just said, to state it another way, no transfers from savings to checking have been necessary in 2022. So Pastor earlier today indicated that our finances are good. And, and I think this is, I mean, this is a positive sign. We have not had to transfer any funds um, so far in 2022 to cover our operating. Uh, we have not had to transfer funds from savings to checking to cover our operating. And one thing that we do want to highlight, uh, given everyone's interest in the backpack pro program, there's currently a balance of 11,950 that's designated for backpacks. However, though, we have not yet paid our fall commitment. The food, pan the food bank no longer sends out invoices. And so we will, I mean, rest assured, Greg will be sending our fall commitment um, to the backpack program. But I really do consider it a commitment. It, it's really not, a, a, a bill, so to say. Um, I think philosophically that's how the food, the food bank looks at it as well. But roughly half of this amount will soon be sent to the Lincoln Food Bank for our fall 2022 backpack commitment. Uh, Greg, what, what would you like to add?
Basically, the checking account has been fairly steady, around $15,000 every month until this last month. We've had a little bit more expenses. Uh, there was, we paid for gutters for the uh, parsonage that's been needed for quite a long time. And uh, we had some uh, problems with the boilers that had to be fixed. That was a pretty big expense. So that's why you see the checking account as low as it is this last month. But overall, we've been pretty nice and steady. Everything's been covered. And uh, matter of fact, when I had a small chart, but I wasn't able to transfer it over, that shows that our expenses is pretty much following pretty close to exactly as what our giving has been going. So as month by month. So uh, a lot of the savings that uh, we've had this year is because of the uh, endowment committee uh, taking over the loan to us for the uh, mortgage. So we're kind of, we're self, basically self self-funding our mortgage for the last section of payments. And that's saving us some like, was it $6,000 this year? Oh, 16,000. So that's a, a huge help. I guess if there's any specific questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Okay. Thank you, Greg. We'll, we'll do this also at the budget meeting coming up. But again, I want to recognize uh, Greg's service as treasurer for the last five years, six. Um, and, uh, and also recognize that, that Kurt Weller will take over the treasurer responsibilities effective, officially effective January 1. So thank you, Greg. So any, any more questions come to mind for Doug or Greg relative to our revenue or expenses? All right, thank you. So two more sections to go. This is a single slide, uh, as I said, very brief two-line summary of what we'll talk about in more depth in two weeks. And, and basically, this is, you know, Doug and Greg just summarized this as well. Doug expects, he projects that our revenue will remain flat in 2023. So he expects our total income, our total revenue for this year to be 215,000. And Doug projects that our revenue for 2023 will be roughly that same amount. We're going to realize a total savings of almost $7,000 next year though, because again, we basically refinanced our mortgage uh, by, uh, accessing some of our endowment funds. So the, that refinancing saved us around $16,000, but because of additional expected expenses next year, the, the net savings will be about $7,000. So a two-line summary of the budget that will be presented in two weeks. Questions about this quick summary? And then finally, um, great news, and we just found out this week that we, uh, St. Andrews was awarded a $6,000 grant to hire a social media intern. Earlier this year, and I think it was at their January retreat, uh, council decided, planned to try to bring on board a social media intern. The original objective was to try to do that by September. In the meantime, though, we became aware of a grant application offered by Emanuel Foundation. And so uh, Gene Vberg led that effort with the assistance of Charlotte Burke, Pastor, and Marianne to gather all of the necessary information to submit the grant application. I, I think the due date was the end of September, Gene. Does that sound about right? So the grant due date was the end of September, and we requested $6,000, and we indeed received the $6,000. I know you can't read the font, um, but this is just a, a, an image from part of the letter that we received. It's dated November 10th from the Emanuel Foundation, addressed to Pastor Kim, uh, indeed confirming our, the award of $6,000. So this is good news. Um, 
part or all of this will be designated for some sort of stipend uh, for an intern, but we really do need to follow this path that we've been talking about now for a couple of years, that, that we are indeed a digital church. And we always, I mean, each Sunday, for example, we have anywhere between 15 to 20 people joining us online. And this is just part of our strategy in terms of, of our, the growth of our ministry. Uh, part of our strategy for growing our ministries here at St. Andrews will be via a, a social media strategy. So we, this is, uh, we're very grateful for this, for this gift from Emmanuel Foundation. There is some paperwork that has to be filed soon to make it all official. Uh, contract, well, at the bottom of that letter is a line <laughs> for pastor to sign her name to, saying, yes, indeed, we'll, we'll honor the you know, requirements of the grant and what have you. But, Gene, anything else you can think of relative to the grant application and, and the award? Yeah, I mean, for me anyway, it seems like there's a new app every day. Um, so just trying to stay on top of that, for example. Uh, but trying to stay on part of that strategy. And it not, I mean, this is going to go beyond simply updating our website, which Pastor spends a lot of her time now doing. I mean, it's more than just simply sending out email messages or updating the content of our website. It's developing a strategy on how we can utilize social media to, to reach out to our community and, and, to, and to help serve our community and, and, and minister to, to them. So, any questions about the grant award? That's it. What questions do you have about anything? Well, thanks to Greg and Doug and Gene and Ken and Ryan uh, for assisting this morning. Uh, let us know. Let us know if you have any questions, and of course, uh, we'll be gathering again in two weeks to talk in more detail about the budget, so we can certainly have discussions then as well. Thank you very much. Thank you for your continued support of St. Andrews.